Yeah. Hey yo, Eli, what the fuck? Gang, gang, gang. Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus, the fuck up. Like the fucking split. Tell these clown niggas, get off my dick. Let's get it. They got better for me, I'm a demon. I know my label saw me for a reason. Most say it, but they gotta jack me. Pete, they got Sally, I'll be so a jacky. I ain't trying to make these niggas happy. Face it or what, you gonna be the next face of my blood. Like, God. Uh uh-huh. Like, get back and I really made it in the money. Get quitty for 22 shit. I'm the greatest. 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 That's when I feel in love with this shit. Man. Fuck a beat, I ain't tryna be bossy. Why the fuck these pussy niggas robbing? We tryna catch the nigga while he chopping. Why he lacking? Like Where's like like his bitch? Both of them shot, both of them head. D D dummy and Lila and shit. Stop smoking on bricks, that nigga don't hit. But that nigga Lottie got a kick. It's a lot of indictments, a lot of jail. You know this Bronx hell, Bronx Afghanistan. Reporting to you live. It's your motherfucking boy, the most wise. And we gotta speak about this, man. It's a whole b- bunch of gang indictments coming down in the Bronx, man. You know, I mean, can't shoot that podcast. No, I'm playing. <laughs> but seriously, man, it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of Bronx gang indictments right now, man. And it's nasty out here. It is so nasty in the town right now, man. Free Dougie B. Unfortunately, they got him locked up again. We gonna get into that. Free Lee Drilly. Free K Flock, free D Thing, free PJ Glizzy. It's nasty. It is nasty. Eric Adams came and he freaking swept these streets like I ain't never seen before. But what I will say is, I see a lot of people kind of happy about, you know, all these, in, all these arrests and indictments and drill music and drill culture. I had to speak to the homie yesterday. I spoke to Low Key from um Apple Beats one. He was just, you know, just telling me, you know, you gotta stay focused, man. You gotta, you gotta translate drill culture into pop culture. You feel me? And shout out to the OG man, always guiding me, telling me the right things to do in this industry, man. A lot of y'all be on some fake shit, but Low Key, one of the realest man. Shout out to Rory Mall, the whole. You know what I mean? Yeah. But let's get into this, man. So. Um, I believe it was yesterday or whatever. District Attorney came out. She had, she announced um, you know, some charges or whatever the case may be. Matter of fact, let's in, let's insert that right now. Let let's, let's play that for y'all real quick. Hold on. Five sixteen-year-old boys have been indicted on charges related to the fatal shootings of thirteen-year-old Jerron Elliott and 16-year-old Raymond Gil Madrano on July 11th in the Belmont area of the Bronx. The not, we're also That's announcing the non-fatal shooting of two 19-year-old men on July 12th in the same area, as well as carjackings and robberies in the Bronx that occurred from May through July. These defendants are charged in a string of violent crimes, culminating in the murder of two boys that contributed to a brutal summer here in the Bronx. In this indictment, there are five 16-year-olds. Three of them are charged in the murders of teenage boys. The others are accused of stealing cars, possessing loaded guns, and committing robberies. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean? If, if, if y'all wanna um listen to the full to the full um press conference, just go to motherfucking New York Post or something like that. You know what I mean? But you know, th- this this shit I be talking about, man. Like, you know, they 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 don't get these kids no options, man. None at all, like, you don't get no options, no chances when you're from the hood, like, straight problems all day, for real, for real. Like, yeah, but yeah, you know what I mean, they don't get these kids no options, man, you know what I'm saying, like, they don't get these kids no options, man, ain't no more drugs in the community, right? At least when niggas should be hustling drugs and all that shit, niggas should be able to tell you little young niggas like, are you making a block hot? You gotta get a body here with all that shooting shit. Like, when we was coming up and clapping niggas and all that, niggas be like, yo, you wildin', man, you making a block hot. 
but ain't no more blocks, you feel me, like, like, as far as, like, drug dealing and shit like that, like, you know what I mean, niggas that have their operations and shit like that, but ain't no corner boy type situation, you know what I mean, niggas probably hit the phone, you know what I'm saying, niggas had a trap phone jumping type shit, you feel me, like, everything really phone action, that's what I'm saying, all niggas got is guns and iPhones nowadays, man, that's all these niggas got nowadays, for real, and, 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 I, and, and I think, like, niggas really expect, you know, these kids just to figure it out on their own, man. Or figure it out through the internet or some shit like that. Nah, they gonna do what they know. But the beauty of it all is that they're young. You feel me? So, as long as we keep, you know, drill culture intact... They'll be home in three, four, five years. You feel me? The Bronx and seen shit like this happen already, man. But they come grab everybody up. Now it's my job as a podcaster to keep the culture alive. It's my job to keep the culture alive. So when they come home, they good, man. They also grab Dougie B up on a motherfucking, um, you know, probation violation as you see on the screen. But, you know, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna get too much into it, man. Like, you know, like, free everybody, man. Free, free Dougie B, free K Flock, free D Dang, free Lee Drilly, free um, PJ Glizzy, man. Free the whole Bronx drill scene, man. This is why Fabio was so important right now, man. For real, for real. Like, shout out to Free the Goat, man. You know what I'm saying? Fabio, I'm um, like, stylist and all that. He do a lot of, like, his custom designs and all like, that. That's real fly dude from the floors. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we got to make Fabio a superstar to show show the industry what drill culture could do and what it could be, right? It don't have to be so locked and entrenched in just beef and um and murder rap. You get what I'm trying to say? You know, with Fabio album, like, you got to understand, right? Drill is a musical sound. It's like jazz. It's like R&B. You know, a heavy bass drop and all that good stuff. So, you know, at the end of the day, we just got to change the content of the lyrics and all that. And that's going to come, you feel me? But, you know, for the most part, the, the, the youngins that's coming up out of, these, out of these social environments and all that, like, this is how they express themselves, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand that shit, man. Like, this is how a lot of these young kids know how to express themselves, man. It's either rapping or or just shooting, you feel me? Like, for real, for real. Because if, you know, you go in these school systems and shit like that, you're not seen or you're not heard or, or you or you ostracized or chastised just for being, you know what I'm saying, a, 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 a black young man or whatever the case may be. So, a, a, a nigga pass you a hammer and you feel that power that you get from from busting that motherfucker that's what you've been searching for your whole motherfucking life is that power you know what i'm saying you don't got no power in your household you don't got no power amongst your parents you don't got no power amongst your peers because you got all these immigrants who who got all this anti black sentiment so no matter what you say no matter what you do they ain't feeling you when you bust that gun though when you bust that gun Everybody fall in line, especially the immigrants, especially the immigrant hoes and all that, three old foes and all that. You feel me? This is what's leading these niggas to really go out there and commit these drills or whatever the case may be. I look at drill music like like re- revolutionary music, man. I really feel like, you know, drill culture as a whole has united gangs across America. And I think that's why a lot of these motherfucking, um, you know, media outlets are so scared and all that. I don't, I don't think they scared of the murder and shit like that because black people been dying. You know what I'm saying? You know, and then they, then they done um, brainwashed a lot of black people to feel like, like, um, oh, you know, they, they, they got the, um, the, the issue off of police abusing and killing people and somehow shifted the conversation to. To Chicago, you know what I'm saying? And when they say Chicago, they're just talking about black on black crime and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So now you have a lot of these black people trying to be on some, oh, what's, what's up with black on black crime and XYZ and the third and, you know, kind of focusing in on drill music as like, um, as like they did in the crack era. You know what I'm saying? They use drill music as the scapegoat 
for everything else. You know what I'm saying? So if you have a racist or you, or you have a racist institution telling the little girls to pull out their they braids, even though they said they had a crown act, but the little girl couldn't compete because she had beads in her hair and you got seven white girls um, pulling out her hair while, while she's crying. And then you go and ask the, the congressman, you know, didn't we have a crown act passed? And she tell you, oh, it's not passed everywhere. But me and three other sisters is working for it to be passed everywhere. It's like, what are we doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, why are we voting at this point? Just so y'all can lock up our kids and, and, and blame it on our brothers and cousins and saying everything is their problem? I mean, I mean, everything is their fault? Nah, man. It ain't these little kids' fault, man. We all been there. We all been shot before and been participating in gangs and all that good shit. You know, thank God I got to a point, right? Or we got to a point, right? A lot of older black men got to a point where, you know what I mean? We, we, we made it through that and said, oh, shit. The system was designed for me to go do all that dumb shit. Let me switch it up and, you know what I mean, not get caught in it. But a lot of these young boys, they don't realize that until they already caught in it. And that's how the system is designed. You feel me? I'm not going to place so, but so much blame on the parents except for them parents that, you know, snitch on their kids and turn them into the police or whatever the case may be. Because it's not the parents' fault. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> they may play like 10%, 20%. You know, not showing love, X, Y, Z, and the third. But you have a whole system, a whole infrastructure in place that produces these type of um violent kids time and time again. Especially in these public schools, you know what I'm saying? They 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 throw these immigrants on top of um you know the, these foundational Black American kids and stuff like that. But the Caucasian kids, they in some schools somewhere in the suburbs, was bubble fuck. They their their communities is not affected. You know what I mean by all these changes, right? You got gentrification coming in, changing the hood X Y Z in the third. You got people seeing new buildings and thinking that. You know, they see a new building and a couple of um, white neighbors and stuff like that. They done lost their goddamn mind. You know what I'm saying? And once they see a white neighbor until they start talking about black on black crime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not really, you know, holding the system accountable for not putting, you know, the proper programs and, and things in place to, to, to get these boys before they become criminals and, and convicted felons because they don't care to. Why they don't care to? Because they do not want black boys or black men participating in the system as adults. They don't. It's too much masculinity. This is this is why the whole agenda is to emasculate the black man and the black boy and put all these um gay images in front of their face. And the rest, all the all the masculine ones and XYZ in the third. You know what I'm saying? But that's just my thoughts on it. But at the end of the day, them kids ain't in a bad place, man. Or oh, y'all little niggas, man, hold your head. You'll probably get four or five years. Sit in there, read, do what you got to do. You'll be out by the time you're 25, 26. And when you come home, when you come home, get right back to the rapping shit, man. You know what I'm saying? And and focus up and do what you got to do, man. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6, man. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Everybody hold your head. Whether I, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It is what it is. If I said some wild shit or not about you, whatever, I, I, I don't want to see nobody in jail. And I see a lot of people taking this as a moment to kind of step on drill. You know what I'm saying? As they always do because, you know, a, a, a lot of people live vicariously through the district attorney. I repeat, a lot of people live vicariously through these district attorneys. They like seeing black men in jail. And with that, man, 40 to the motherfucking family. Yo, why to the G's, man? Stay black, bold, and beautiful. Keep on fighting. Keep on struggling, man. You know what I'm saying? One day at a time, man. The war ain't over till it's one. You hurt?